Good evening, good evening, good evening. How's everybody doing? Hope well.
All right. I hope uh, all of us know tonight that truly we are, we are, truly we're blessed and highly favored. Uh, thank you guys for joining us tonight, wherever you are. And uh, I know that um, I am totally aware that uh, there might be some people coming in late, uh, checking out the events around the, surrounding the inauguration. I'll be mindful of that and, and try to uh, make sure that uh, we'll hold you too long tonight so you can join back in whatever you were doing. But I'm glad that you're with us tonight and I'm glad that you take, take, take the time out of your schedule uh, to, to join us for our study on tonight. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm just, uh, I like um, change is good. You know, change is good. And it's, it's a, a refreshing feeling in the air. And uh, let's forget, tell people outside, throw aside your, your political, uh, your political affiliations, just, uh, just good common human decency and respect and normalcy uh, is, is much welcome and much uh, appreciated. Um, you know, we don't, we don't, cause we shouldn't cause division and talk about it and, and we shouldn't support people or things that do and so sometimes we can be so moved from from reality and it's good just to put it for a day uh for a lot of that rhetoric and a lot of those things to be we toned down so but we're gonna keep going on tonight i won't i won't hold you because i know you guys are doing a lot of different things but i thank all you who have taken time to stop in on with it, stop in with us tonight we appreciate it with you i hope hope that uh everything finds uh, this this message tonight finds you well, and if not, uh, hopefully after you leave tonight, uh, you'll feel better in your spirit and in your mind and in your uh, in your soul. So we're thankful to God for all of His blessings. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll say a prayer, and then we'll get started. Father in heaven, we thank you for all your blessings. You're the giver of all good and perfect gifts. Father, we want to thank you today for allowing there to be a peaceful a transition uh, in, in our, our government as well as we want to thank you for the blessings of life, the little things, the rain, uh, the cold, the wind, whatever we are and whatever weather we're experiencing, the sunshine. We're just thankful for life. So many things you continue to provide for us on a daily basis that become easy to take for granted, but we recognize you as the source. Father, we pray tonight as we go into your word, Father, that the objective tonight, which is to uh, open our minds and our hearts to understanding that you desire for us to be like you uh, and uh, understand that you do live in us and we should possess your heart and your mindset in our lives. If there's someone who's hurting tonight, be with them, bless the family. I pray that you bless the new president going forward, that you would uh, be with him and all those who are in leadership and all those that you've uh, put in authority uh, we continue to pray for them. and may we all continue to uh, be good stewards of the things that you placed us with where we are and may we be more effective in doing what you would have us to do. Lord, and I ask this prayer tonight in Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 So again, thank you all for joining in with us tonight, taking out a little time for the word. I'm not going to hold my, my about 20 minutes or so. If y'all can hang with me, I'm going to try to go uh, through this, but y'all know exactly uh, how that how that goes tonight. Uh, if you have a Bible or a text, uh, and again, when we when we get off here, I want everybody to you could give us a shout out wherever you're from. I know we have people at uh, different states that join us every night. We uh, every time we, we get on, we appreciate that. So I want to tonight and Sunday we talked about a lot on Sunday, and uh, this Sunday I would encourage you to join in. We're going to talk about uh, the the functions. I don't have a particular topic yet, but the functions of, of the evangelist, uh, which is uh, which is 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 a is a is a part of the body, uh, and you see that Ephesians chapter four uh, that's given the body for the perfecting of the saints, uh, and uh, we we know that all of us have a role to play, and uh, we talked about how the vision and strife can be among us and in and around us. This Sunday, last Sunday, uh, we talked about how we should not give so much of our hearts to worldly things. And we are a long way from home. We're just passing through. Uh, and we've got to stop giving temporary things, permanent attention and learning how to to put everything that happens in life in its proper perspective. So tonight, I think it's important. I think it's a lesson after I was thinking about this after uh, the last four years. Uh, uh, of seeing an uprising of hate and hateful speech 
uh, and uh, divisive rhetoric. Forget we're not talking policy. This is not even politics. This is general human decency and and Christ-like spirit. It, for me, I was becoming exhausted of that, uh, of that, and um, I, I was always taught that people in high places, if you have a with, with position comes responsibility. You're responsible for your words. You're accountable for your words, and. Uh, it was it, it's it's tiring on a lot of people, and whether people realize it or not, on top of what you're dealing with, uh, it, it can become a very tiring thing. And what often happens is when we have a year like we had, uh, we often are in a place where there's we begin to develop empathy. And today, it really hit me when the um, the president uh, actually paused and, and said, "Let's take a moment of silence for the over four hundred thousand people." who lost their lives due to COVID. And when I thought about that, it really hit me of the magnitude of, uh, it's probably double that amount that's grieving the loss of those people who died. So it doesn't just affect the person, it affects their families. And somebody, you know, the wife who's left trying to raise those kids by herself or the, the kid who lost their parents uh, and now have to go live with somebody else. Uh, or the vacancy or the gap that's left because the pastor or the preacher who used to preach there for 20 years is no longer uh, there. Uh, and, and this is happening all over, all ages, all parts of the world. Uh, and I think sometimes we get so desensitized with death and destruction that we pause to forget that a life is not just a life. A life is a person who's uniquely formed and made by God fastened by God and, and somebody loves me. If if I were to go tonight, um, there are, you know, two little girls in there with, that would be devastated without a father, you know? So we don't think about those things. And and, and I think tonight's lesson, really talking about compassionate, com compassion is really moving us from empathy to compassion. Now, I want to talk about that tonight. I think em empathy can be impulsive, right? Feeling with somebody, but We'll do it in the moment, but we'll stop after that moment is over. And then sometimes we think uh, empathy uh, can be unifying, but sometimes empathy can actually be divisive because a lot of times in life, we are only empathetic for people that are close to us within our circle. We don't help those outside our political party, outside our race, or outside our socioeconomic uh, status. And then also uh, empathy is inert. What I mean by that is it, 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 it only allows you to feel with someone, but but compassion moves you to action. All right, and we're gonna look at that in a second. Empathy can be a drain, and I'm just feeling with, I can be feeling, but, but compassion is re, regenerative, re, regenerative which, which means that uh, it allows, uh, it brings a person back alive. It restores a person by what you do for them. And so we wanna look at that here for a second. I'm gonna put a couple things up on your screen and I, as I flow through this, with a little bit of fluidity. I'm gonna to attempt to flow with this tonight without getting caught up. So I wanna use for subject, compassion matters. You know, we're talking about the different lies and then funny every time uh, I remember doing the uh, back when the, all the police brutality is going on, people saying black lives matter, people saying, well, my life matters. I don't think that, I don't think by saying black lives matters, that was negating that all lives matters. I think I think the aim and it got out of control but the aim of that movement was to 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 say, hey, you got to we got to stop killing unarmed African American guys in, in the street. You got to stop doing it. Uh, and and what matters, which means you know when something matters, uh, you give time and attention to it, right? Jesus said, M Matthew six twenty one, wherever your treasure is, your heart will be also. So whatever you value, you put your heart in it and you put time to it. But and so tonight we could this this matters could go both ways. Compassion matters, as to say, there's some some things that happen around uh, the word compassion or the idea that compassion does matter. And I think in all of our lives, when we're hardened by death, I found myself last year, guys, at some point, kind of desensitized because after I lost my dad, then I was like, man, you know, another death is a death is a death. It happened to me over the course of years, but doing attending so many funerals, doing so many eulogies, you know, standing in gray sites, it's almost like I, you get wired to be like, that's just my job. Death, um, you know, tragedy, <laughs> you know, trauma, that's just what I do. And uh, and the, the downside of that is God never wants your heart to be hardened. 
uh, but he always wants you to have a compassion and feel for people. Sometimes when you see people in situations, the first thing you ask is what did they do to get themselves in that situation? And I want to show you tonight that the God that I serve, the God that most of you serve, the God that some of you should serve is a compassionate God. Matter of fact, uh, he's looked out on us and at us uh, and he's shown compassion to us. And so that's critical and, and crucial. Uh, and when you think about compassion and the compassion that Christ had, uh, he's 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 he told us. Right. He told us that I will be with you. I am in you. I live in you. Uh, so there should not be a disconnection to what we say we are. And I say this before what we possess and what we profess. So we say that we love, but that's only to those who love us. What reward do you have if you only love those who love you or do good to those who do you? So do good to you. So I think I think even as a country, and I can't speak for the whole country. I'm probably I'm not speaking to the whole country tonight. But if I were, I would say compassion matters more than anything else. We are never more like Christ than we were exercising compassion when we're showing compassion to other people. That that's what it that's what it's about. Don't allow life to harden up your your heart. And a lot of people allow politics. Uh, people allow money, people allow somebody jumping in front of them for a job or position. I often say this, if God has it for me, you can't jump in line. You can't skip uh, me to get what God has for me. Uh, and, and the Bible would say, who would harm you if you are a follower of that which is good? I don't follow, uh, you know, you vote for who you vote for, but, but we were never told to follow. Anytime you follow a man, uh, above above uh, the prince, you try to follow uh, the person above print above principles, then you've already missed missed the point. Uh, I follow you as you follow Christ, but once you stop displaying the principles which Christ embody, I no longer seeks to follow you. Uh, I don't. Uh, Christ was not divided. He was not a divisive person. He was not an evil. There was no sin in him. Uh, no, nothing nothing foul coming out of his mouth, uh, and. You'd be surprised. Uh, you'd be surprised how I uh, got to have compassion. And believe it or not, y'all, some of y'all gonna get mad at me today. Compassion shows itself in like love in the ugliest places. You know, I, I felt bad for for Donald Trump today, uh, and the reason why being because he missed out on a historical moment because he could not come out of himself. What a lesson for all of us. Uh, and then I thought about. It, I said, you know what? He probably felt. Uh, you know, the other guys. You know, Clinton, Bush, Obama probably didn't even know how he felt, regardless of what he's done. There's no excuse of, of some of the things that he said and done. But but all of them were two term presidents, <laughs> you know, so they probably couldn't relate to how I feel to be out before and done, you know. Uh, and, and I felt sorry for him because he missed the moment. He wanted a big send off. But what he didn't realize, if he would have just went through the normal, uh, <laughs> the normal pasture, he would have had a big, big send off. They would have walked him down and uh, everybody would have watched and, and waved at him as he before the whole country, not just his followers, but before the whole country, his disciples. That's what they are, disciples, because disciples, anyone who follows your teaching and then you follow it, uh, you know, almost. Anyway, so uh, he would have got on the airplane. They would have waved at him. And I saw a picture last year when, uh, you know, all, all of, before Trump became president, he spent his whole time saying Barack Obama was, was, was not born in the United States, but they still welcomed him. Um, and and I, I said, you know what, it, it's, it's not about race. It's not about what you got. It's about what you value and what you are. Sometimes you got to be nice to people who aren't nice to you. You got to have compassion on people who don't get it sometimes and they they, they mess they, they we get in our own way sometimes and i feel sorry for people who can't see beyond themselves to see the bigger picture you know so so consumed with with themselves that they don't see uh how they're affecting others and how this is going to have effect and then what is history going to say about you are you missing a moment are you missing the now uh, maybe because you're just too hard for your own good. I know some of y'all just too hard for your own good. And as, because you've been hurt, you've been misused, you've been abused. Somebody's done something you wrong. And we, we develop these hardened shells, right? Especially you've been talked about or you've been mistreated. You know, think about it, the civil rights movement of the 1960s when they were doing those sit-ins 
and people were spitting in their face, calling them names and sicking dogs on them. And, 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 the, and the inclination, the natural man wants to fight back and the natural man wants to get even. But a man that's been transformed by the holy living and divine word of God uh, is not an eye for an eye type of person. Uh, as a person that's made over in love. And I pray today that somebody who has a hard heart was, was soften it a little bit. We've got to get out of this. I, I want to see them get what they got coming to me type of mentality. That's not Christ-like. In Mark chapter six, there's several examples. It's when Jesus landed and saw a large boat, he had compassion on them because the Bible says they were like a sheep without a shepherd. So then he began to teach them and he began to teach them many things. This was after Jesus had witnessed uh, the head of uh, John the Baptist. He got in the boat uh, and he got out of there after John the Baptist was beheaded. But but he saw he saw a multitude of people and he had compassion on them. He he not only just felt with them, but 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 he saw that they had a need, uh, and he realized that they were like sheep. And that's all we are without Christ. We're just like a sheep without a shepherd. He guides us and he directs us. As David said, he leads me beside still water. And why does the water have to be still? But because sheep are afraid and running water, sheep won't even drink it. So the shepherd knew that. The shepherd knew exactly where the sheep are supposed to be. Jesus has compassion on us when we're lost. Somebody out here is lost right now. You're trying to figure out what's your next move. Uh, I'm a good godly woman good and I can't seem to find a good godly spouse. I'm a good godly man and I can't seem to find a good help me. Uh, a child is saying I am lost because I can't fit in friends at school and I don't know where I fit in this world. We've got to start having compassion on one another. That's why Paul says, look, uh, not every man, don't look, don't look on the things of yourself, but look on the things of others. Uh, and I think if we would look in on others and drop in on others and see how other people feel. Sometimes uh, we would we would lose our compassion. Thank God for all of these nurses who've had to play mother and father and uh, they've had to stand in the room and watch somebody say, take their last breath. I've had to do that before. And that's not an easy uh, thing. And uh, to, to comfort someone else in uh, their time of need with the comfort that we've received from Christ. And the only way you can have compassion is that Christ has got to be uh, in your heart. We got too many Christian thugs out here. Uh, and, you know, uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a dealer, but I'm a hope dealer. <laughs> That's slang hope, you know. Uh, and, and I think we, we, we have so many people out here who are so hard uh, and you're killing yourself both physically and spiritually being so hard, open up. It's okay to love again. One of the things about a good heart, I use this as an analogy in one of my classes the other day, good communication is like having a good heart. Blood must flow in and out. Uh, you can't just have an outflow. Uh, you can't just give, 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 right? Because that's going to cause you to feel depleted, but you've got to be able to have some inflow, which only comes from service. When you serve others, when you serve others, what can I do for somebody else? What can I do to lift somebody up? God, make me a steward. God, make me a servant. God, give me the eyes and the heart to see people like you see. Lord, let me help the hurting. Let me offer a word uh, to someone else and to really see that in all of these things uh, that God is in control. And I want to literally be a beacon I have an aim to be a light for him. And so I think that's important uh, tonight. We see another example of this, uh, that, that he knows what all of us are feeling. Hebrews chapter four tells us, we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses or sympathize with us, but we have one who has been tempted in every point, just as we are, yet he is without sin. I'm going to say this. Some of you have heard me say this before, but it's okay. Galatians 6, chapter 1. When you see your brother overtaken in the fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of weakness. The thing about those priests, they had to offer sacrifices of sins for themselves first and for the people. But Christ is one who did not sin, yet he understood what you're going through. He understands your situation. I think I did a few weeks ago. God knows. Somebody says, I've been tempted with this. He was tempted with it, but he, was, he, was, he wasn't. When I said, therefore, if you go further, we go boldly before him, before his throne of mercy and grace and find mercy in the time of need. God is compassionate. You know, it took me a while, y'all, 
to realize that on my journey because sometimes living around people, people are so self-righteous and so judgmental and so hypocritical. Sometimes it's hard to really be a Christian uh, in these in these type of environments because uh, Christians can sometimes be the worst. I don't want that to be say, said so about me. If someone needs to talk to me, I, I can guarantee I'm not going to judge you. My aim is to reconcile you. You have one that, that judges you. Uh, Mark, I mean, Matthew 7, uh, 7, 7, 1, Jesus said, judges you, you be not judged, right? Because I don't want the measure of judgment to come back on me. I don't want it to be tough and, and, and strict because I'm, I am worthy of kind of, I'm worthy of, of damnation like all of you, but God is gracious and merciful toward us that we can come before his throne of grace and we can find help in the time of need because God is watching. Have you ever think about that sometimes? That's why I say all the time, don't ever, I don't need you to feel sorry for me. I need you to pray for me. <laughs> that's what I need on my journey because that, that's having compassion. When you can pray for something, it's hard to hate somebody and pray for them. You know, it, it's hard to because you're going to say, God, pray for my enemies that, that you would bring destruction and death. You would see that a lot in the Old Testament, though. I, I, I had a discussion with somebody. Lord, bring your enemies to destruction and you it's your name. And we, we pray for that. And, and I, I got that. But as we are now, uh, we we are praying for our enemies. We love our enemies. We have compassion on it. Uh, I go back to what Jesus said while on the cross. Father, forgive them because they don't know what they don't even know what they're doing. That's a compassionate statement. Um, I, and how many of us could say that somebody's after you now, Lord, forgive them because they don't even know what they're doing. They talked about me, but they don't really get what they're saying. Maybe, maybe he didn't. Uh, you know, uh, a person who's never had to say no. They're going to have a have a difficult time when you say no to them. <laughs> a person that has never lost is going to have a difficult time. So a person that comes from an abusive background is going to have a, a difficult time uh, opening up to people. They might be suspicious about people. Uh, it all depends. A lot of things. There's a lot of factors that are involved in a person's worldview and a person's worldview shapes their narrative. So sometimes the way you see it is just your story. It's your world, well, world, world, world view. It's where you come from. So we've got to learn to have compassion on people. Uh, Jesus uh, is a compassionate savior. He is a compassionate savior to us. And so uh, as a several examples, I can think of uh, two blind men sitting by the roadside in Matthew chapter uh, 20 and verse number 24, the Bible says two blind men were sitting by the roadside. And when they heard Jesus was going, they shouted, Lord, son of David, have mercy upon us. Then the Bible talks about how the crowd rebuked them and told them to be quiet. But then the more they tried to make them be quiet, the louder they shouted, Lord, son of David, have mercy upon us. And Jesus stopped and called them. Then, then I like what Jesus says right here. I think this is the question. Uh, this is the question that all of us should be asking when people help. What do you want me to do for you? That's what Jesus says. What do you want me to do for me? They said, Lord, we want our sight. And Jesus said, no, nah, I ain't going to do that. Y'all heard me say this before. There's a lot of people who, who are willing to do things, but are not able. I would give you the $20, but I don't have it. I would help you, but I don't have the time. I'm willing to do it, but I can't fit this into my schedule. Uh, whatever, I'm willing, but I'm not able. But then worse than that are the people who are able, but are not willing. I do got the money, but I want to give it to you. Yeah, I can bring you healing, but I'm not going to do that today. I do have the time, but I got better things to do. The Lord is willing and able. He wants to help you and he's he has the capabilities to do it. He can give you anything that you need or want because he created all of it. He is the originator. He is the source. So he asked me, me, I'm me, Samuel, what do you want me to do for, for, for you? Lord, give me a little bit more peace. What do you need me to do for you? Lord, Lord, let me stop worrying about petty things. Lord, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, help me forgive my ex-husband and my ex-wife. Lord, what do you want me to do for me? Lord, heal my relationship with my children. Lord, what do you want me to do for you? Well, uh, uh, I, I need you to, uh, uh, Lord, so what do you want me to do for you? I need you to heal my relationship between my mother-in-law, between my relationship, my father-in-law. Lord, I need you to touch the hearts and minds of my boss. Uh, and, and God can touch the heart just like he did a Pharaoh for his people. And Jesus had compassion on them, the Bible says, and he touched their eyes and immediately they received sight. And look what they did after Jesus blessed them and opened their eyes. 
They follow him. See, some of us are just taking the blessings and we ain't giving things back. God changed us. God saved us. God caught us. God renewed us. God made us whole again. God sanctified us, justified us, made us right. And we're still not contributing to him. We're still not giving back. We're still not reciprocating compassion to other people. We're still not uh, paying it forward, so to speak, in our spiritual walk. There's another example of this, uh, this widow. This was the widow's only son. Y'all know it's important for a widow uh, to have someone to care for her, but this was her only son. Uh, and it's one thing we have your only child. That means when you lose them, there is not another. Uh, in, Matt, in Luke chapter seven, verse number 12, the Bible tells us as he approached the town gate that a dead person was being carried out. Uh, and this was the only son of his mother. And she was a widow. The Bible says that there was a large crowd from the town that was with her. And when the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her because God is just not some God up in the sky that we've made him to be in Christianity that's ready to strike you down every time you did something wrong. And I say this all the time, and I don't think y'all really get it. We've all done enough to be out of here. You know, uh, we act like, I don't know, we've all done enough. If God wanted to take you out because you wrong, you got enough guilty as charged, enough evidence. The case is booked, but God is not like that. He's long suffering for us. He gives us a chance to change and get it right and get ourselves together and change our mindsets. And, and the fact that we're here tonight, we have to thank God that 400 people have died from a disease, yet I live. You know, what makes you more special than them? Nothing. It's grace. It's mercy. <laughs> it's compassion. Maybe God looked at your situation. He said, you know, I, I don't want so-and-so to be without a mother or without a father or without a husband. Uh, and the Bible says he, he saw her and his heart went out to her. The Lord's heart is going out to you. It goes out to me. Uh, our hearts ought to go out to one another. And he said, don't cry. Man, when I read the Bible, I slow down and I hear I hear phrases, I hear words, and I hear that tonight. And I'm telling somebody, don't cry. Don't don't cry. I know sometimes you got to cry and you got to get things off of your chest. Uh, but but don't cry doesn't mean don't cry. It just means don't mourn too long. Uh, don't don't be consumed with it. Don't don't let it overwhelm you. When you say don't cry, you, you dry somebody's tears. That means you can make it better. You can make it all right. He went up and he touched her uh, and uh, uh, they were carrying him. Uh, and he, think about it. He didn't even he didn't even touch the boy. He touched. Right. Uh, the Bible says he touched the, the air that they were carrying him on. All he did. He didn't have to touch him. All he had to do was touch what they were carrying. <laughs> I should have preached this. He didn't have to touch him. All he had to do was touch what they were carrying. God, all he has to do to fix you, sometimes all he has to do is touch what you are carrying. He can touch your burdens and remove them. He can touch your pains and remove them. That's all he has to do, touch what you're carrying. I should have preached this. Uh, I'm realizing this right now. There's so much meat on this bone uh, that the Holy Spirit is showing me right now, but I got to move on to I'm going to come back and preach this. But, but, but they stood still and he said to the young man, uh, get up. Dead man sat up. Dead man began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. He restored. The Lord can restore the years that the locusts and the canker worm. God can restore that which you think you lost. God specializes in resuscitation. God specializes in renewal. A dead man sat up. Wouldn't it be nice if God could 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 resuscitate your dead heart? What happened to your heart? You used to be so loving, so sweet, so kind. You you let life, but we let life and politics and racism and and our relationships make us hard and bitter and have hatred in our heart. What happened to you? God needs to res resuscitate somebody at night, and you you'll get up. Uh, and, and you'll begin to talk differently and God will restore you back to where you once were. Sometimes it's okay to say, I need to get back to where I used to be. I don't like this person that I have become. And, and the person I've become has become years from taking up on everybody else's mess, years from not resolving conflict, years from pretending things happened to me that didn't happen uh, and not, not being able to, to get them right. And you carry it around. Where is it going to go? 
Where is it going to go? It's important that that you love God. Anybody, I've had people lie on me, lying on it. You know that you have to have. You ever had to move? I've had to maneuver. And you have, you have to work with people who don't like you. You got to move with people that, that lie on you. You got to do all those and still have compassion for them. You know why you got to have compassion on them? Because the Bible says it. We don't like it. He makes it. He makes it rain on the just as well as the unjust. And he does. Uh, you know the the criminal. And the way I, I get that idea. I walk my dog earlier in the rain. The criminal can enjoy the same refreshing rain, right? But we ought not to fret over our, fret ourselves over evil doers. But let me ask you, what happened to you? You know, I, I asked myself, you know, man, you used to have because what happened is, you know, y'all know I, I, I'm one who's not afraid to express my emotions. You know, and you know, people used to say coming up, you know, my dad's generation, you know, I, I'd rarely see him cry. I don't think that was because he con, co, wasn't compassion, but I think it was more of a cultural norm that real men don't 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 cry. And so, I, you know, I'll say, hey, I, I, I've been, you know, I'm, this makes me emotional. <laughs> I'm a human being. I feel, you know, real. I often say, real men don't real men don't cry, or real men get hyper blood. Uh, hypertension and high blood pressure and real men actually die earlier than women. You see a lot of times grand auntie and mama and, and uh, great auntie all sitting around talking and their husbands are gone. You know, we, we never learn to be compassionate. You thought you had to be hard. Again, uh, you, uh, we got too many spiritual gangsters in the church. You're trying to be hard for no reason, but that's not Christ-like. All right, so I'm moving right along. I got to get help here. So, so the question is, I want to ask now: Are we compassionate people? Are we compassionate people, or do you just talk about it? Right? Do you go out of way to help somebody? Or are you too scared to help anyone? Uh, the Bible says, "There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear, because fear has torment." I can't help you and be afraid of you and fear you at the same time. So, it, it's so important to look at. Look with Psalms 112. Psalms 112 and verse. Number three says, even in darkness, light dawns for the upright, for those who are gracious and compassionate and righteous. Uh, even if you are in a dark job, in a dark situation, in a dark marriage, in a dark church, uh, if you are righteous uh, and gracious in those moments, you will still shine. Isn't that the goal? To shine so Christ can get the glory uh, in our lives. Uh, that that's a great text to live by Colossians three and verse number 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and the dearly beloved, close yourself, clothe, clothe yourself, cover yourself with compassion, with kindness, with humility, with gentleness and with patience. We often clothe ourselves with the opposite. Uh, we, we close ourselves with indifference with anger, with pride and arrogance, uh, with with harsh rhetoric and with impatience. Uh, and and that's, that's not Christ-like. Uh, Galatians 6 and verse number two, Bible says, carry one another's burdens. Carry one another's burdens and in this way you fulfill the law of Christ. That's right after the verse that says, if your brother is overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual restore such a one, carry one another's burdens. Man, somebody says, I got too much to carry. You know what I heard last night? I was putting on my shuffle. This came on. Lean on me when you're not strong and I'll be your friend. Y'all know I'm, I'm not on the bus stop the song. I'll help you carry on for it won't be long till I'm going to need somebody to lean on. You just call on me, brother, when you need a hand. We all need somebody to lean on. Cause I just might have a problem that you understand. <laughs> oh man, that came on last night. And I said, that's perfect. That's perfect. Lean on me. I might have a problem that you understand. Uh, we all need somebody to lean on. I know you think you can do this by yourself. You can't. I, I don't need, I don't need nobody. I don't need nobody. It's me. 
as I said, <laughs> how you pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps with no boots? You can't do that. There's some people in our country that need help. And they say, well, it, 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 and I said before, most of the people in our community need help. It's not going to come from a government. Uh, you can't legislate ethics and moralities and value. You can you know, feeding the hungry. They don't, it don't take government legislation to feed the hungry. Or one of the things that I'm going to do uh, that, that we're going to do, uh, you know, and, and like I said, our facilities that we're uh, expansion project that we're engaged in now, that's just not about us. We're going to use them. And I, I can't wait uh, to the, uh, uh, to reveal and develop an expansive uh, center uh, to, 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 to deal with both the mental health as well as the, the spiritual issues. I think it's important to meet people where they are the need. I, you need this. You need the gospel but you also need counseling. <laughs> some people need the gospel, but they also need to take keep taking your medicine. I, you know, some people got chemical imbalances. Get off that, Jesus. I seen what happened when some of y'all get off your medicine. I mean, I, not I'm not calling nobody in particular, but I'm saying some people when some people get off their medicine. I was like, brother Beatty, you know? <laughs> no, no, no. But that that happens. So I think it's important to have compassion on person, even that person who takes that medicine. Sometimes you got to say. Oh, they're not. They act crazy. Oh, you know what? They didn't take their medicine today. And and that's and and you that's that's real. That's legitimate. Second uh, Corinthians chapter one, three through four. Praise be to God and our Father, Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our troubles, so that we can comfort those in trouble with the same comfort that we receive from God. I'm a living witness. Anybody else know that God is a God of comfort? He, he comforts us uh, and he lets us know things are going to be OK and everything is going to be all right. And we comfort other people because we have been comforted by God. We see in Ephesians chapter four and around verse number 32. Rejoice with those with, with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. You know, one thing I found, it's easier for us sometimes to mourn with those that mourn. We'll all come to a funeral right? And, and we'll we'll feel bad for somebody and say we're praying for them if they lost somebody. But uh, we don't, when you drive up in a new car, we ain't going to be too excited. Or you get a new promotion on your job or something big happens to you, you know, uh, don't let them marry the man that, that all y'all had that owl. You know, everybody's going to be upset about that. People have a hard time. People have a harder time rejoicing with people than they do mourning with people. Sometimes we just don't want to see good things happen to people. And you know what I'm going to say about that too? You know what? That, that is actually uh, a heart problem as well. When you find yourself jealous of people uh, and envious of people, uh, then you, it's hard to, to have compassion in, in that type of heart as well. So I think that's important to look at. Last few, and I'm going to get ready to wrap this up. Romans 12 and verse number 15, uh, the Bible says, uh, that uh, he says, finally, uh, my brother, excuse me, am I off? Uh, no, that was Romans 12, verse number 15. I, I'm sorry, you guys. That was Romans 12, uh, 15. I'm, I'm off a little bit. I want to go first Peter 3, 8. Finally, all of you be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Doesn't this sound like the right type of person, the right type of person. Uh, we see first Peter four and verse number 10, the Bible says, each of you use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in the many different forms. Go to the Old Testament. We see example of this in uh, Zechariah, where that we got We did have a, a, a example of this, and there it is in Zechariah chapter nine, in uh, Zach, Zechariah chapter seven, verse number nine. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united, uh, excuse me, Zechariah chapter seven, verse number nine. This is what the Lord Almighty said: Administer true justice, show mercy and compassion to one another. Do not oppress the widow or the fatherless, the foreigner or the poor. It says, do not plot evil against one another. Um, that's coming from, from, from the Old Testament. Philippians chapter two, verses uh, one through two. Uh, the Bible says, 
Philippians 2 verses 1 through 2, the Bible says, therefore, if you have any uh, encouragement from being united in Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any communion in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete, be like-minded, having the same mind, being in one spirit and of one mind. So as we go tonight, I think it's important for us to know that what compassion is. Compassion, compassion, compassion is. What is compassion? Compassion is deliberate. Uh, that means you, you make a, a real effort to be compassionate. Sometimes empathy can happen in the spur of the moment, but you said, I am a compassionate person. Not I want to be, but I am. I have compassion on, on people. And just because you have compassion on people don't mean you need to be best friends, right? <laughs> I can forgive you. Who, who says I, I need to forgive you? You wrong me. I can forgive you, but that don't mean we need to hang out again. You know, I don't know where that comes from. If you forgive me, uh, we got to go shopping. If you forgive me, you're going to be my girl again. No, I can't be your girl, but I forgive you. I ain't mad at you, bro. Live your life, but we ain't boys no more. You know what I mean? So compassion is is, is deliberate, though. But I got compassion on you. I feel sorry for you because because you played yourself trying to play me. Anybody out there like that? If you try, you play me, you end up playing yourself because I'm still going to love you. I'm going to forgive you, but I don't have to fool with you. Somebody said, brother, man, you're not being Christ-like. No, 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 no. Wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. You know, uh, 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 uh. some of us are, 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 are getting run over in the name of Jesus. And you putting that on Jesus. Jesus wasn't like that. Jesus told the Pharisees what uh, what, what they needed to know, he gave them the business, and he moved on from you. See Jesus hanging out with them. You know, we hang out with people. Some of us, our self-esteem is so low that, that we'll actually try to be cool with the people uh, who talk to talked about us like you know that there's a you know there was a our brotherhood was at in a crazy array one time and there was a brother who was saying stuff about me that wasn't even true i still went around i had i wasn't gonna run and hide because it wasn't true telling his congregation telling other congregations things about me that was not true at all but it wasn't about me i see him i speak i say how do you do but i'm not going to lunch with him you know anybody can make up lies and believe that i'm not they were not friends you know, it's okay to be associates. <laughs> There's people you got to work with and, and you upset because you want them to be your friends. You don't go to work to make best friends. Get your check, serve your God and go home. So what? They don't like you. I don't like him. I don't like him, but that ain't going to stop my blessings. Remember, God still reigns on me. And last time I checked, God, we're on the same team. God's still working on me. God's still working on you. But then the question is, before you start creeping around my door, make sure you don't have some of us that got skeleton just falling all out, just falling all out the closet. And we, we try to shove them in there. But yet, remember, here I go, y'all. It's been a, uh-oh, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. Dun, 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 dun. Let me find it. Where we find it? Y'all forgot. It's been a long time. Shouldn't have left you without a beam to step to. Y'all remember this old beam right here? You trying to call out my faults and my flaws, but this is you. This is me. This is you. This is me. But if you realize that this is really all of us, <laughs> then Jesus says, you'll be careful when you realize this is really me. Say, you know, I got to work on this. Maybe I need to try to get this down to this before I worry about this. You you worried about the, the uh, you know, the pen in my eye when you got a whole foam roller in your eye. You got a whole telephone pole. I call it toothpick telephone pole, the moat and the beam. I got a toothpick. You got a telephone pole. But yeah, you focus on mine. And then, you, then you'll tell me, turn around, whole house is on fire. Nothing to see here. Nothing. It's burning down. Nothing to look at. Uh, and so we, we say it's, don't confuse that. Compassion is not ignorance. Don't be foolish with that stuff and throwing it off on Jesus. You got to be wise about that. You destroy yourself trying to be friends with somebody who don't like you. Real friends, you don't have to make them like you, and they will have compassion on you. Real friends, you don't even have to explain it to them. They already have a heart for you. They already can see it. They can sense it. They anticipate it. And all of us as Christians, we deliberately serve 
Let's serve our enemies. Let's serve people. Uh, and there is no such thing as being above anybody. I'm not better than anybody. I can always say I'm better than that, but I'm not better than you. You know, and I was thinking about what Jesus uh, washed his disciples' feet in John chapter 13. And Peter said, you shouldn't wash my feet. Lord said, if you don't wash your feet, you have no part with me. I came to serve. And he said, I'm doing this as an example indiscriminate of who comes to the table. Y'all heard me say this before, if it had have been Judas and if it had have been me, I might would have said, that's why I'm not the Lord. I might have said, listen, listen, Judas, I know everything. Listen, listen, listen. In just a few, you're going to sell me out for 30 pieces of silver. And the nerve of you to think, I'm going to get down and wash your feet, not your feet, Yo, feet. Nah, bro. Come here, Bartholomew. Let me hook you up. That might have been me. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'm not Jesus. But he says, I'm doing this for an example, not showing that you just washed the feet of Peter, the one who you're going to call to pre preach Pentecost, or John, the one who he described as being the one that Jesus loved. But you got to wash the feet of your betrayer. And I'm doing this as an example. Stop picking and choosing who you want to have compassion on. Stop picking and choosing who you want to serve. Stop picking and choosing who you want to help. Just because they're not in your corner, the, one of the best things you can do is help an enemy, help somebody don't like you, pray for them, still smile, and realize that God is not going to bless you based upon what other people think about you. God is only going to bless you based upon what you think about yourself and your identity resides and who he is and understanding that he lives in you. That wasn't even part of my lesson because compassion is unifying. That means it brings people together. We have one purpose, one cause. What would our country do if we focused our, our issues off of politics and going back and forth, what party you are? And everybody said during this time, let's focus on serving those who are in need in this crisis, in our community who need services, who need help. You know, and unfortunately, a lot of people don't speak up and tell people they're in need of help because, you know, nobody nobody's going to help. Uh, compassion is active. That means it's not just something you think about doing. Right. You know, the good the good man with the Bible, you know, the priest, good priest and the Levi, they walk right by <laughs> the man that had been beaten on the road. But the good Samaritan, the least likely was the one who stopped and helped him. He had compassion. Compassion always makes you move. It always makes you move. Uh, that's like somebody said, oh, you ain't got nothing to drink. Brother Bailey, you ain't got nothing to drink, Sam. That's all right. I'm praying for you. I don't need you to pray for me. I need me. I need a case of water. <laughs> God, my, your life's off. I'm praying. Well, you don't pray the TXU will cut me back on. Help me pay this bill. Gosh. And we, we do that all the time. And it's translated into everyday life. We think about, I'm tired of us praying. That's all we do is pray. When are we going to move? You know, about faith. Pray, pray, pray. Faith without works is dead. You can believe it all day, but it's someday the, the rubber is going to have to meet the road. It's someday the world's going to have to see us as a compassionate group of people, not just a group of religious zealots who sit back and call balls and strikes without ever getting into the world. You judging me, but you never tried to help me. Did you? Did you change? Did you? Well, you know the song says, "You never mentioned him to me." You know, uh, Jesus says, I call it the great bucket list in Matthew chapter 25. There's going to be a lot of people say that, you know, Lord, didn't I do all these things in my name? You know, did you do it to the least of these? Did you give a cold cup of water? Did you visit the sick? Did you visit incarcerated? This is what really matters. This is what really matters. And I think not if we, we got our legislation in or whether our candidate was in or whether I agree with public policy. Did you help somebody? If I can help somebody along the way, Lord. Give me a chance, but I've got to be ready to move and I've got to be ready to act. If you see me in need, if you see somebody else in need, we don't need a church committee to do that. You don't need approval from the minister or the eldership to help somebody where you are. It doesn't have to be on written down on paper. That's in your heart. It's not limited to a church building or to Sunday morning. That's just who you are. It's active. It moves to me. And I'm and I'm anticipating and I'm looking for an opportunity. Because if you have a heart for it, God will make the opportunity for it. And lastly, uh, compassion is regenerative. That means uh, to, to read, to, to generate again. Compassion can actually bring a person back to life. 
as Jesus did. He resuscitated. Remember, he had compassion on Mary and Martha, as they said uh, uh, that, uh, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know even now, you know, you can do all things, but if you had been here, um, that that's a question we often ask God, Lord, if you had been here, maybe I wouldn't be like this. It, it, had you not allowed me to go through this, maybe I wouldn't be so bitter. Had, had, they, had they not treated me so mean, maybe I wouldn't be so hard. Um, that's up in the air, that's debatable. Um, I believe for a lot of those situations, we choose to be there and be where we are, but uh, compassion is re regenerative. Uh, on us, gives us another chance to be another better version of ourselves. Um, I don't like mediocrity. I don't like neutrality. I don't like being in the same place this year as I was last year, and I'm not. Uh, and I hope this time next year I'm in an even better place, uh, learning new things, growing, challenging myself, reading more, working on my craft, uh, removing some of the the calluses that have been built up uh, in my heart because of ministry and because of life. And I want the Lord to regenerate me and to continue to, uh, to restore me to being uh, who he is and, and being like he is on tonight. So I know you guys are going to uh, do whatever you do tonight, but we serve a compassionate savior. And I just want you to know that compassion, it does matter. Uh, it does matter what you say. And, and not only does it matter what you say, it matters how you say it. So I think some of us have got to re-examine the tones, you know, in which uh, we articulate our, our point. You know, we, we win the battles off the time, but we lose the war. So it's often uh, how how we how we say it, you know, and, and compassion matters. Do, do you ever look at someone and say, when you feel sorry for me, you ain't going to do nothing. But if you have real, if you have real compassion, if you saw me in a, in a place and you had compassion for me, you wouldn't just feel sorry for me. You would move to do something. That's what compassion does. And and I'm so so blessed to have people who've had compassion on me, not pity, but compassion, because it moves them uh, and, and it moves them to bless. Uh, and you know what happens when, when I've been blessed? I bless others because I've been blessed. I was blessed, first of all, to, uh, to come from a great family. I had, I had great grandmothers and great aunts. And, you know, I never met neither one of my grandfathers, but I heard they were good dudes and uh, I, I, um, I um, had two grandmothers, uh, one of them lived in the 80s, the other one lived in her 90s, I believe, good women. One, one uh, you know, at the heart, country girls, they loved their grandkids and they were proud of us. I blessed to have uh, come up in a home with, with uh, two parents and, you know, they love the Lord, they love God and they raised us. Uh, in the Lord and told us how to put God first and, and instilled in us a deep love for God. Um, you know, they, they would not let us fight each other and love each other. And, and, um, and, uh, and, you know, to, 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 to be kind people, loving people. And, you know, those, those blessings, my dad was a kind man, you know, a big, strong man. He, he was kind, you know, uh, he, he really was laughed easy and, you know, th those, those, those um, those blessings that God gives you, he, he didn't bless me that way to to turn around and then be evil and then, you know, be unkind and allow life to transform me into a person that I don't know. And I think tonight the question got to be for all of us is to look ourselves in the mirror. You know, sometimes, you know, it's upsetting to think about what, what some of us have become. You know, it bothered me that what, what, what has the country become? You know, and I, I think it's because we fail to see it. that message got to come from the top down. We're not enemies. We're on the same team. Uh, we we love one another. We're kind to one another. We don't yell or scream at one another. I, I don't tolerate that. I don't tolerate that on my kids. We you're not you're not we're not screaming at each other. Do you see me? You see me walking around here screaming. You see me raising my voice, yelling at everybody. We're not gonna have that. Uh, and, and I think that's that's important to do it. There are times when we get caught off guard, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> and we all lose it, you know. There's times I, I lose it. Uh, no, don't get me wrong. I, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about moments of passion. 
you know, but I'm talking about there's a difference between moments of passion and then that's just your way of life. You know, that's your way of being. So thank you all again. So compassion does matter. That's what matters the most. And I think I laid out my case tonight, not only through practical examples, you know, I have to try to inject some humor in there, but also through, through the word, through the example of Jesus, through practical examples, through real life examples and uh, we have to adopt this this posture in our lives. Uh, and I think when my, the homework for the night is when you lay down to God, ask him to uh, check your heart tonight. Is there jealousy in your heart? Is there envy in your heart? Is there strife in your heart? Maybe bitterness, anger, I don't know, whatever it is, turn it over to God. And uh, he truly uh, can, can regenerate you uh, and to generate something better, uh, something created in his image, something... Uh, that is is open uh, to to change, to grow, uh, and then put down this this beam tonight. I, I was waiting for an opportunity. I didn't know when the beam was gonna come back out, but but it, it's here, and I hope y'all get the image. I can't see. I'm, I'm trying to call your life, but but I'm not quite where I need to be. God bless y'all tonight, and once again, uh, I have done it once again. Uh, Thank you, Holy Spirit. I've said I was going to do a 30 minute lesson that turned into a 50 minute lesson, but uh, that's OK. Uh, God bless you all. Thank you all for joining us tonight. And uh, you can go back and if you didn't get to hear all this, you can go back and check it out and join us you know, on Sunday morning. Always appreciate the support and the, and the encouragement um, and drop us a note or a line in there and uh, thank y'all for communicating and sharing in the in the feed and the comments. I have to go back and check out. Look like we had a pretty good number on here tonight. So thank y'all for uh, for taking the time out there. May God be with all of us and, and keep us protect us. And as the last word, as the as the Bible says, guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. All of our issues, most of them, stem from heart problems. Uh, guard it, guard it, and um, we thank God for y'all. So blessings and peace and love. Love y'all and look forward to uh, seeing you on, on a Sunday. I'm going to take it back to an old school classic before we pray. Y'all remember this song. Um, <laughs> I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters lifted me, now save am I. Oh, love lifted me. I know that love lifted me. Oh, and when nothing else could help, and love lifted me. And I know that love lifted me. Oh, love lifted me well and we nothing else could help love lifted me I gotta sing this verse, it's my favorite. Souls in danger, look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry ways. Cause he, the master of the sea, willows his will obey. And he's your savior, wants to be the same. Today I know that love lifted me, oh love lifted me, well and we and nothing else could help love lifted me. I know that love lifted me, oh love. Lifted me, and we 
when nothing else could help and love lift See, I had to sing it like that when nobody, I can't hear nobody sing. <laughs> I didn't hear nobody pray. All right, so uh, let's pray. God bless you. Father in heaven, we're thankful for this day you blessed us with. We're thankful that we were able to take time out of our schedule uh, to be able to study another portion of your word. Father, we pray that uh, the word touches our hearts and allows us to uh, let you live in us and that the word flow through us, that we will not become hardened and be turned over to hatred and rage and and, and that you would continue to make us over. Help us to be a compassionate people, a loving people, a, a, a caring people, a people who are like you, who have the mindset of you. Father, make us more compassionate. Give us the opportunity to not be like those uh, who pass over uh, people, but take the time to see what people are in need of. And we're looking out for one another and bearing one another's burdens and being like you. Uh, Father, we know that if, if our church is more loving, that uh, you will bless us immensely. And so we pray that you continue to guide us and keep us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, Cedar Valley, we stand together, y'all. Well, hey, it's been a long time pandemic and we haven't been able to get together. It's the, the, I know it's still strong. It's still out there. But we're doing our best to keep everybody together. So, you know, it's really important when y'all join in here like this. It's a way to keep us connected, and I think everybody's done a great job uh, with that. That's that's why I don't uh, don't uh, unless it's, if I can be on here, I can because we got to stay connected during these times and stay together. So um, I'm trying to do my part, and I thank y'all for doing y'all's part, and it's encouraging. And we gonna we gonna make it. You know, we will survive this storm. Lord's willing. He's a gracious God that cares for all of us. So so love y'all. Y'all have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, we'll go out with some exit music and uh, we'll have a good time.
I'm about to wear my jersey on Sunday, brother. I'm mean, brother, I need it. Hey, I'll send that to you, brother. Uh, that is Sam Robson again. It's the shiny up north. Got the Tampa one too. <laughs> I still got the, the, the I got the, the Patriots oh, editor. Come, oh, come Thank you. 